Welcome to Psalm 104. The Lord creates the earth in wisdom. As I mentioned, I believe in the last psalm, I had a friend who just recently started looking at the stars and realized how special the earth was with the water and the uh, animals and life on it compared to all the rocks that are out uh, in the cosmos. And came to the conclusion that there has to be a God. Well, a lot of people have come to that conclusion. The Bible basically starts off with the creation, Genesis 1, and God created uh, the heaven and the earth. And a creator creates all sorts of things, seen and unseen things, we know that there are other creations outside of man in the Bible. It talks about the cherubim and the wheels and the angels, the archangels, seraphim, uh, the dragon, the, the devil, many other things. And we see that there in this creation of God, uh, there is a place called New Jerusalem, which is a cube which will come down out of heaven. So the earth uh, is what we see, and what we can see through the telescope is celestial, but there are other things that God has created that we don't see, but we have known about them because of his talking, sending messengers, angels, and his son Jesus to tell us about these things. I'll read a little in the Greek, get us going here, and then we'll go into the a psalm itself. A psalmos to David. Evlogi e psikimu ton kirion. Kirie o theos mu e megalinthis sphodra. Exomologisan ke megaloprepian en adiso. A psalm attributed to David, as so many are. Bless the Lord, O my soul. This begins the same as Psalm 103. Uh, eulogy is the English derivative. Soul is my life, my existence. Bless uh, the Lord, O my existence, my soul, me, what, it, what I made up of. Curie, O Lord, my God, you are magnified exceedingly. Ma magnified as far as man looks at him, the people that do magnify him, that know him, see him for what he says he is and what he's displayed and what we believe uh, exceedingly with many people. Now, there are others that don't believe at all. They're called atheists. They believe uh, that somehow a big bang occurred, somehow things came into existence and evolved. It continues, you clothe yourself with acknowledgement and majesty, an acknowledgement by his creation uh, that we acknowledge who he is. Again, not all of this creation do acknowledge. It's kind of sad. And uh, his majesty, megaloprepion, and that would be the majesty of a king and all of the uh, people around him in a court um, courtyard on a throne and the majesty of uh, musical instruments playing, people um, praising him and yelling out and all sorts of things, the military marching by and playing uh, instruments with their bands. All of these things that have to do with the majesty that God has. Can't imagine what it's going to be like to really see his majesty in full when we go to the other side to see to see this. It's going to be uh, probably it's going to be more spectacular than anything we can even imagine. He's cloaking on light as a garment. Uh, so to him, uh, th th these are now a lot of figures of s speech. Now, you know, does he put wrap 
clothing around him. No, but it uses human terms for these figures of speech to explain uh, the uh, heavenly. So he has control of the light and he stretches out the heaven as a hide covering. The hide coverings were used to cover over the tabernacle the, or the holy of holies within the tabernacle. And here he's using the heaven as a hide covering for over him. That's uh, the uh, power that God has in the vastness. Roofing uh, his upper rooms with waters. And now we're going to beginning um, verse 4. Uh, it talks about the waters. And uh, the waters would be within the um, atmosphere of the earth. And the upper, his upper rooms <laughs> uses them again as a figure of speech. Now, there are, I don't think there are rooms, layers, because there are layers. There's the atmosphere and then the uh, goes into outer space and so forth. But the waters are in um, the atmosphere. Apparently, with the uh, the book of Genesis shows that there was no rain. The waters existed up above in what was called the firmament until the flood when they was opened up, and then rain appeared. Somehow it came down onto the earth. He's placing clouds for his step. <laughs> God stepping on the clouds. We know that Jesus does go up into, did go up into heaven in a cloud and says that he will return the same way. A sort of like a step standing on it. And the one walking upon the wings of the winds, and now wings are the extremities of the winds where it blows, uh, feeling it. We are going through a lot of winds right now on the Oregon coast. Um, and we had last week, I think it was up to about 75 mile an hour gusts. But he's the one walking upon the wings of the winds. Again, it's a figure of speech, but he uh, is up above the winds controlling everything there. And then 104, uh, 4 is a quotation now in Hebrews 1, 7, where it talks about uh, the angels are... Um, less, Jesus made himself lesser, less than the angels, but yet he is greater uh, when he comes back, but he made himself lesser than the angels coming to earth. And it says, and that was a quotation in Hebrews, how it says, in the, quoting Psalms here, it says, the one making his angels a spirits and his ministers a flame of fire. Now, exactly what these uh, a flame of fire and his ministers, um, I'm not exactly sure what that would be referring to, um, but uh, the flames re are related to God and uh, the spirits, uh, the one making his uh, angels spirits, they can come and they can go whenever God wills them to do such. They have come to the earth and talk to people and appear to people. And then we see that they also uh, have fought with each other, uh, the uh, evil versus the, the good, the holy angels. And he is the one laying the foundation of the earth in its stability. It shall not lean into the eon of the eon. So he's put the earth here for as long as he wants it to be here. It says it shall not lean into the eon of the eon. Uh, I remember at that mega church I mentioned that the pastor talked about uh, the earth being kicked off of its axis. Uh, axis uh, like here's the earth and the North Pole is here and it kicked it off a little bit when it got hit by an asteroid. Well, that would be different, but it's not the earth leaning on its own. If that did happen, uh, that that might have caused uh, the um, time where the earth got real cold and all of the dinosaurs died and so forth. And he has the deep, the avisos, and the deep is mentioned uh, as in water 
uh, and it's also mentioned as a place that Hades, uh, that the Satan goes to, into the earth. And so exactly what the deep here is, it says the deep uh, as a garment of his, uh, of his wrap. Somehow he even controls the deep. Upon the mountains, waters shall stand. And so we have here the environment of the uh, earth and the mountains, the waters uh, are, shall stand upon the mountains. And then from your reproach, they shall flee. From the sound of your thunder, they shall show timidity. So the waters evaporate, go up uh, upon the mountains. I suppose you could look at it that way. And from your reproach, they shall flee. From the sound of your thunder, they shall show timidity. That is the waters. And they ascend the mountain and then go down to the plains to a topon, topography, place where you laid a foundation for them. You placed a limit which they shall not pass, nor shall they return to cover the earth. Now, he's probably talking about the oceans and the seas pretty much have a limit. The waves stop. Uh, I live right on the beach, right behind me. I walk half a block and I'm on the beach. I can see the water and they have tides, goes up and it goes down, but it never goes any past that unless I suppose if I had a tsunami, which would be a possibility. If there was a big earthquake, we could have a tsunami. But generally, the um, oceans all stay within their place. Now, some people think with global warming, global change is supposedly going on, that the waters will rise up and cover the land. But I also wonder, well, why couldn't the land recede and go down, and then the uh, water would cover them that way? The one sending out springs in ravines, and this is all has to do with the uh, environment, the earth. He s sends out springs that come up and they go down into the ravines, flow, become rushing torrents. Waters shall go through in the midst of the mountains, mountain streams. They shall water all the wild beasts of the agru. Agriculture comes from that word. Uh, the waters water all the wild beasts. Uh, they amazing how they can be in the desert. I was watching a video and can be in the desert, but yet somehow they'll find some water and they can live in um, very, very dry uh, areas of the earth, but yet uh, they do find water. Wild donkeys shall receive it for their thirst. And those are some of the animals that are out in the wilderness. By them, the winged creatures of the heaven shall encamp and the animals uh, that are there where all these wild donkeys and the wild beasts of the field, there are the birds. Uh, flocks and flocks of them, especially you go over to Africa and see videos in Africa, um, how all these birds are together, just amazing. And from between the rocks, they shall give out a sound. The uh, birds watering mountains from out of his upper room. So his uh, watering, sending out the water to the mountains. From the fruit of your works, the earth shall be filled from the, with the water. Then uh, we go more uh, into agriculture. He is the one causing, the last ones were the weather. He is the one causing grass to rise up to the cattle in the plains and tender shoots to the service of the men to bring bread from out of the earth. Well, he brings wheat from out of the earth. This is a figure. The wheat becomes bread after it's ground and um, so forth. And enos, vino, wine, which makes glad the heart of man. So wine make people get intoxicated 
with wine. It says it's not on a negative here. You shouldn't be drinking it. Uh, it's, uh, it makes glad the heart of man to make his face happy with olive oil and put the oil on and refreshing and uh, the skin and bread which supports the heart of man. All comes from God. Then we have the agriculture. Uh, I'm sorry, that was the agriculture. We have forestry. The woods of the plain shall be filled. The cedars of Lebanon, which you planted. And where I live in Newport, Oregon, we have trees. I mean, this is green here. Now you look everywhere, and you're gonna, all you're going to see is green. Uh, you look up in the sky. You can be going down a road uh, here in Oregon, a, a major highway, and it's a, a two-lane road, and then these trees are straight up, and your car is right here, and all you see are trees and a strip of blue at the top if it's a sunny day. It's so many trees. There, the sparrows uh, will nest. Now we get into the animal kingdom, uh, the birds, uh, the dwelling of the heron, Takes, takes lead over them. And the heron is a aquatic bird uh, that lives by the water and fishes. It's another word for it, and I can't think of it. Uh, the high mountains are for stags and mountain goats, animals like that, and a rock of refuge uh, to the hyrax, like a rabbit. He made the moon for seasons. Now we get into the celestial of the creation. He made the moon for the seasons. So the seasons uh, go along with the uh, movement of the, of the moon and the earth and so forth. And the sun knows his setting. Of course, the sun's always shi shining, but the earth as it turns and looks like the, earth, the sun is setting, where actually it's the earth revolving, but... Uh, the setting sun. We even call it the setting sun today. Um, and, the, and this moon for the seasons. You made darkness and night happened. So when uh, the earth turns away from the sun and comes dark, moon appears and night becomes. Nix, nocturnal, comes from that word. All the wild beasts of the forests uh, go in it at night in the forest. Lion cubs roaring to seize by force. A lot of lions, uh, animals uh, of the feline uh, family like to roar and roam around at nighttime. Cats. They're seeking from God food for themselves. <laughs> Another animal to kill. The sun arose and they were brought together. Uh, came back to lay down in their lairs they shall lay down. Man shall go forth unto his work, even unto his work, until evening. Now we have the creation of man, and man goes to work. A lot of people don't want to work, try to get out of work, uh, and that's not the condition that God set for man. He made man to work. And if man uh, if men do not work, then they they don't get bread, or they miss out on the blessings of God. I think work is a blessing from God. And working into evening, how your works, erga ergonomics works, were magnified, O Lord. You created all in wisdom, Sophia, uh, the wisdom of God. And we find uh, the wisdom of God through God's word. This is how man learns wisdom from God. Especially, I think, the Proverbs have a lot of information about what wisdom is and how it works. We're going to be getting into Proverbs uh, fairly soon. The earth was filled of your creation. More animals. This, a great sea. Um, oceans, Mediterranean, Atlantic, Pacific, India, and so forth. The broad space, 
Located there are reptiles which there is not a count. And reptiles are all over the earth. Crocodiles uh, in the water and alligators also uh, in the water. Frogs and uh, snakes, a lot of snakes all over the world. And uh, many other uh, reptiles, turtles, can't think of their interesting family of reptiles. Uh, living creatures, the small with the great. You can have a little small microbe, a little small protozoa up to the great uh, elephant. Or the, I guess the whale. One of the whales are even larger than an elephant. There, the waters, the oceans, boats travel over. And then it has this interesting uh, phrase here. This dragon whom you shape to sport in it. Uh, sport in uh, the water. Now, the dragon appears in different places, sort of different forms. It depends on the context. In the book of Revelation, it's related to the ancient serpent, the devil, Satan, the dragon. But it's also related sort of with Egypt, and it could be the crocodiles, which are in the water as a dragon type of a creature. Or it could be some of the uh, large uh, creatures that are in the ocean that people had seen in boats, uh, thinking that they were relating them to some sort of a dragon like the uh, whales and so forth. And then, of course, then there's the, um, um, uh, what's, the what's the one that's in Scotland? Um, the, um, I can't think of the name of it, Le oh, the Loch Ness Monster. And there's these monsters that uh, are in the water, supposedly probably mythological. All expect from you to give them nourishment in an opportune time. Amen. We hope that we will get it. Some people don't expect God to give them anything because they don't believe in God. Well, they may be missing out on a lot by not acknowledging God. But we don't uh, miss acknowledging God and the opportune time we take uh, advantage of. We give thanks to the God when we uh, eat. And Jesus did the same thing. At your giving to them, and I put a dash there, they shall collect. Opening your hand, all things shall be filled by that which is good. So God gives, we collect. A lot of gatherers, hunter-gatherers in the earth still, and they gather uh, different types of foods that are grown in the, uh, in the wild, more or less, in the forests or in the jungle, uh, picking fruits and uh, so forth, collecting these things. Nuts also, I suppose, would be in other, other types of gathering. Um, produce. Opening your hands, your hand, all things shall be filled by that which is good. But at the turning of your face, they shall be disturbed. So God turns away from man, then uh, man, if he believe, doesn't believe in God, a lot of them do at that time. When uh, God turns from them, bad things happen, they'll call out to God. You shall take away and return their spirit, and they shall fail, and unto their dust, dust uh, they shall return. And we mentioned that in the last chapter about uh, how we are just dust. You shall send out your pneuma, spirit. Pneumatics comes from that. Uh, a powerful wind or um, vacuum. It uh, has to do with air and vacuum and pressure, uh, spirit, pneuma, pneumatics. You shall send out your spirit, and they shall be created. Now, exactly, that's interesting. Does the spirit have something to do with the creation of a human being? Um, we have uh, the um, sperm and the egg, and they meet together, and it becomes a living being. Now, a lot of things come together and don't become living being. Is it possible that the spirit, something that you can never see, that there when it when that 
those two meet, that causes it to become a, the egg to become fertile and to start to uh, form a human being. That it has to do with the spirit of God. And you shall renew the face of the earth. And the earth does get renewed. The face of the earth is always changing. And it will change again. Uh, in the book of Revelation, it talks about a new heaven and a new earth basically being changed. Let the glory of the Lord be into uh, the eons, which it is. The Lord shall be glad over uh, his work, works. The one looking upon the earth and making her to tremble. Um, that could be fig figurative with man being the ones that's really trembling or the earth shaking with earthquakes. The one touching the mountains and they smoke. And there we go, the volcanoes. Charge of that. Then he ends up, I shall sing to the Lord in my life. All right. And I like to sing to the Lord in my life, and I'm sure you do also. I shall strum to my God while I exist. And boy, a lot of strumming in the Psalms. Uh, good reason to go out and get a guitar if you're young and haven't started doing anything with music. Uh, buy, a, buy a guitar or banjo or uh, some kind of an instrument and, and start strumming and making up songs to the Lord. A lot of people have done that. That mega church I went to, a lot of people uh, took up the guitar, and they had a uh, one night uh, Wednesday night Bible study where the people that played were chosen from the musicians' fellowship on Saturday morning, where I came, went to, uh, and I was born from above there at, again, and. Uh, not They don't pick necessarily the best ones, but they just pick whoever is going to play uh, for that night. And they'll have three different uh, groups or three people. Uh, and you, you never know what it's going to be. Can somebody come out there and sing? Or is another male or a female? Or a, could be a um, somebody playing a guitar or playing a violin, playing a flute, piccolo, all, the, all different kinds of uh, ways of praising the Lord. Not worship, but praising the Lord. Let my versification be delicious to him. The writer is you know, saying this, let my versification. And what are the word in the Greek is the alogi. We have the word dialogue comes from that. The writing this all down. Let it be delicious to him. Um, that he would really love it. And I will be glad over the Lord. But sinners failed from the earth and lawless ones, so as for them to not exist, they will be in Hades. And then he ends up with, Bless the Lord, O my soul, as the last uh, psalm ended also. Bless the Lord, O my soul. And uh, saying good things about God to others. Psalm 105, our next video will be The Lord Remembers His Covenant. Now, to them it was a covenant in the Old Testament, but we Christians have a new covenant. We'll go through all this in our next video seminar. I hope you'll join us. Till then, God bless.